and it needs to download the satellite information from this local area because where we had it in in Seattle, Washington in the States is not the same satellite almanac as here. So we have to download the the new one for this area and it takes 15 minutes to download that. Okay. So that's what I'm waiting for right okay. now. As soon as that's done, I can do the checkout of the float. We go through all of our procedures to make sure the float's going to function when it gets deployed. And so we'll talk. This has a... Yeah, would you explain the bits on it? This is an antenna and it is for Iridium. It's just like an Iridium cell phone that's inside the float. And that's how we communicate the data that the float is collecting during its uh, time at sea. The, the data that it's collecting is in this area right here. This is what we call a uh, sensor package. It collects temperature, the salinity of the water, the pressure of the water, and the dissolved oxygen. Those are the main components of our uh, the data. So this is used uh, for each one of these floats that's out in, at sea transmitting. Every 10 days, they come to the surface, and they start at a thousand meter or 2,000 meters and come up towards the surface, taking samples. And that is all collected inside. And once it reaches the surface, it stops the collecting and gets a GPS fix so we know where it is. Right. Then it switches internally and talks to the Iridium satellite. And once it communicates with the Iridium satellite, it's able to transmit all of the data that was collected at, from 2,000 meters up. Once that's done, it says goodbye and it drops back down again okay, and it. follows current for 10 days and it keeps doing this cycle until the batteries die or something happens. Yeah. Normally it's the battery will die. And we we're hoping five years, but every float is different. So we... Uh, and what happens this, to them then? They typically, if they're at 2,000 meters and they don't have enough battery yeah. to pump, this inside it's, it's got to pump oil into this external bladder and that's how it changes buoyancy. So the more oil outside, the more buoyant the float becomes. Right. And that means it can come up. Yeah. Well, if it, that takes a lot of battery power right. to pump. And at 2,000 meters, if it doesn't have the battery power, it's just going to float until yeah. something happens where it starts corroding and then it'll leak and then it'll drop to the, it'll just completely implode. Right. And it'll be just nothing left of it. Right. Because okay. of that tremendous pressure. Okay. And uh, right now, I believe of this style, style of floats, there's about 4,000 of these in, worldwide. 4,000? Which is not very much considering the size of the ocean. Right. Um, and there's many areas that we cannot get to because their shipping just doesn't go there. 